appeal. And then, of course, we, Robert Fox was working on the, on the appeal for him, and I believe that Robert would have withstood anything the prosecution would have thrown out. Well, anyways, the moment the withdrawal of the um, application for, I mean, the notice of um, appeal was, was received at the court, U.S. Marshals were on his doorstep within hours arresting him and taking him right off to prison. So mm-hmm. I do know that we have, you know, most of the truth movement are agents. I mean, I just say that from my heart. After True. True. Years. Well, this is, yeah, we've, we've covered this before, and I, I really appreciate um, everything you've said, Greg, um, tonight. And, and I, I do appreciate everything you do. It, it's, you're right that, unfortunately, when people are looking for remedy, and I've heard this from many, many people over and over again, one of the great frustrations is that uh, the loudest voices often are rallying people down, well, basically the path to hell as far as um, remedy goes. And that uh, when you approach it in a soft way, you're honest about the fact that we're all learning, that um, it, it's usually the loudest that gets the, the, the most uh, interest. So I'm hoping that, that over time, as we perfect what we're doing, that we, well, there's no better way. We run these disinfo agents out of town. That would be, to me, a great dream come true. <laughs> Greg, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to keep going, but yeah. thank you. Can you tell me, is it star eight or hash eight that you got to get your, your question? Well, it, it, here we say star eight. Star eight. Star eight. Excellent. Good, good, good. So I'll let people know it's star eight. Um, Greg, thank you, and appreciate everything you're doing and, and what you're going to do on the elocution. I'll get right on. I look forward to speaking with you again, Frank. Thank you. Okay. Good on you, Greg. Thank you. Okay. I'll just... Uh, bye. I'll just... Uh, there we go. Uh, pause. Uh, so I see Ron's there. Before I get to Ron, and, and thanks, Ron, just a, a question that was asked by uh, Red Garnett was this question of the... Did the red letters that were sent... Um, what is the outcome? I understand that there's actually been some uh, responses, not uh, responses to the content, but acknowledgements of receipt. And this comes from uh, uh, one of the senders in Australia. So I look forward to when I get copies of that, uh, seeing that, uh, letting people know. And we still have to get the originals up on the website. So again, this has been something that's been delayed. I'm also aware that at least one if not a couple of the letters were uh, sent back unopened. And this is specifically for the Grey Pope, the Franciscan Pope uh, Tasca. And the Italian was uh, gratefully interpreted. And effectively, it was saying that they were not at that address, which was a, um, uh, a bit of a fib. So we'll see if uh, we get more of that kind for the Grey Pope, but I can assure you based on the other uh, information we have received that uh, we have formal acknowledgements that the uh, instruments were received at the very least by Pope Benedict. So that uh, when we get that, I look forward to showing that to you. And I have confirmation, not yet the proof, but confirmation. So that's just that question on uh, from uh, Red Garnett on uh, what's happening with the red letters. Um, I'll come back to another couple of things on that in a moment. But let's talk to Ron. Uh, Ron, can you hear us? Oh, Ron, going back on. Uh, Ron, can you hear us? Hello, Ron. Oh, keeps going back on to... Uh, I must be doing something wrong here. Let's... Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, okay, we'll try it again, Ron. Sorry, Ron. Ron, that's better. Can you hear us now? That was me, Ron. Oh. Okay, we'll try this again. Okay, can you hear us now, Ron? Sorry. It keeps going back on. Uh, I'm just going to going to try this once more, Ron. I'm terribly sorry that it it keeps doing this. So fingers crossed. Can you hear us now, Ron? No, it 
Yeah. I'm. Uh, this is why I shouldn't be sometimes the host. <laughs> okay. And we got everyone right. Okay, we'll try this again. All right. Uh, I'm. It uh, is not allowing me with um, unmuting you, Ron, compared to uh, Greg. So I'm going to try one more, and I'll come back. Uh, let's see, East Pennsylvania. So let's see if we can get East Pennsylvania up. Can you hear us? No? Okay. So we're just... Okay, I'm sorry for this, people. I'm just trying to get this working. One sec, one sec. Okay, East Pennsylvania, can you can you hear us? No, it's still. Okay, we do it this way. All right, Ron, I'm trying, I'm desperately trying to make sure that this is working and I'm struggling to get this to work. I'm terribly sorry. Um, I'm just going to try and get this. For some reason, uh, it hasn't allowed me to get off Greg, so I'm going to try and right okay, we'll try again alright Ron fingers crossed I've tried you once more now no it still won't unmute ok um Let me go through another question while I'm trying to do this. Um, and we've done the elocution. Um, I do definitely want to hear from Ron and I definitely want to hear from East Pennsylvania. So I'm just going to try one more trick here of going mute all. Okay. So everyone is muted, and now we try this. We try the unmuting. Okay. Ron, for some reason, it doesn't want me to speak with you, <laughs> which is not good. Uh, right. So we're just seeing if I can get to East Pennsylvania on this and see, no, it still won't. Well, I'm I'm sorry, but technically tonight I, I don't want to um, make it so frustrating for people because I know that we want to wrap up. I know that there are a number of people. I wanted to speak to East Pennsylvania and I wanted to speak with Ron. Um, hopefully he's going to call back in a moment. And I still am trying to find out if we can get this unmuting happening on uh, East Pennsylvania. Otherwise, I'm going to have to ask for just more questions. And if we uh, don't get those questions, so then we can uh, wrap up. Okay. We have a question here from Guest 34. Are you familiar with dimensions? Are we moving from a third to a fifth? Why then would space stations? Um, part of your question didn't come through there, Guest 34, but the question of, of dimensions, it's not so much dimensions as the awareness of dimension. So I know that science, for example, uh, in the case of um, a number of the uh, leading scientists speak in terms of 10 dimensions uh, when they're doing things like strong force, weak force. 
And this is their way of describing different attributes and different uh, qualities and properties. But to me, that's a corruption of the concept of dimension. Uh, when I speak of dimension, I speak of um, up, down, left, right, forward, backward. I describe the aspects of space and without getting necessarily into the aspect of time and calling it a fourth dimension or then adding things like strong force or weak force, fifth, sixth, uh, magnetism, electricity, seventh, eighth, um, and, and getting into other dimension, sorry, other qualities of matter that then describe dimensions. So I would say that the transition we're going through is one of awareness and awareness of dimension as opposed to adding more attributes to dimension. So I hope that answers that question. Ron, I am hoping that you can now hear me. No, it still, still would not allow me to... Uh, do it Ron. Um, so I'm just going to see one more thing here. What have we got? Okay, we we'll do it this way. East Pennsylvania, I'm going to try and do this to see if it works for you. Can you hear us? No, it still doesn't come up. Look, I'm terribly sorry, Ron. I'm sorry that um, I can't get you unmuted tonight. Uh, let me try this. Let's see if it works this way. Uh, one. Let's see if it works this way. And we don't have... No, it's still... Look, I'm going to wrap up because I can't physically get the uh, the calls off and it uh, doesn't flow when you can't get these calls on. Thank you very much for everybody. Um, I'm going to ask a couple more questions that come up under the chat and then we'll wrap it up tonight. Uh, can we use our bond as security? This is by Wolfpath. To do a set-off of a dead instrument and accept it for value of bill of sale um, regarding bills of exchange. Um, we have not launched the financial canons and laws that provide the step-by-step -step pragmatics for those things yet. So Wolfpath, I would say to you that um, set-offs, which has been asked for for some time, uh, is still a little bit time off before it's used. The bond um, is there as an underwriting and not as a um, instrument to negotiate uh, a uh, set off for other other debt. Yet, as a bond, it is supposed to um, provide an underwriting for liability, but it is an underwriting as a member of Eucadia and not at this point set up to answer those questions of, um, for example, tax and other liabilities. I am going to cover set-offs, and we have been asked for this, particularly with tax, uh, how do set-offs work? And this is something that we have to come back and do. So the short answer at the moment for you, Wolfpath, is no, I would not suggest you do that with that instrument at the moment. That's not its purpose. Um, thank you tonight. Again, I'm sorry that I couldn't answer those other calls. Uh, I look forward to Terry being back, who is definitely an expert at hosting. Uh, so until uh, next week at the same time, um, I have one more question here, sorry. Do we find our actual worth using the stock exchange? Is this possible? I think what you're looking for is the question of, is there QCIP numbers? Uh, the QCIP numbers do exist. And a number of people have, in fact, found the QCIP numbers for their, uh, themselves on the stock exchange. But as to where you go to find that, I don't have the link. It has been given before, and maybe that's something that we can do as an article on University of Eucadia. Um, again, thank you.
I'm sorry that we missed out on those calls. I look forward to speaking to you all next week. And uh, 